Hey everybody. So for the next couple of minutes, I'd like to talk to you about what's next for Marvin Live. We looked at a couple of problems that we didn't have really nice solutions for, and one of that is scientific rationale. Uh, I want to give you an example. So on the right here, you can see uh, a fairly recent publication in JMET Chem where the authors hypothesize that they could get a better by distribution into the central nervous system by changing one of the functional groups of the lead candidate, but keeping an eye on other uh, attributes of the compound. So this is a fairly typical way of um, coming up with ideas for the next compound iteration, analyzing initial or previous cycle data, and then using that um, to come up with new ideas. Of course, these ideas are prioritized against one another because no company has infinite resources. Um, once the decision has been made, the compound is submitted for synthesis. And then a couple of weeks later, somebody might ask, uh, what's the status of this compound today? Um, and yet another couple of weeks later, somebody might ask, why did we make this compound? What is it that we actually wanted to prove with it? And, and a couple of months later, somebody might ask, and, and what did we learn along the way? So how can we use this knowledge now to work smarter and more efficiently in the next project? You, you can't do all of this in PowerPoint. So uh, we spent the last year developing answers for these problems, like capturing uh, scientific observations and helping with prioritization, status tracking, and sharing the knowledge uh, along the way without PowerPoint. So this led to the development of a couple of new systems into the application, kind of big ones. So we wanted to mark this occasion and decided to give Marvin Live a new name, uh, but it all should be very familiar. So it is my pleasure to introduce you today to Design Hub, formerly known as Marvin Live. In the next couple of minutes, I'll be uh, showing you a couple of these new systems that we introduced. First up, we extended Marvin JS, a chemical drawing program, to help us capture scientific observations in a graphical manner. So here I am uh, marking a scatter plot which shows unexpected ligand efficiency, and there is bitmap elements, graphical arrows, rich text, and chemical structures as well in a very convenient, almost PowerPoint like manner. We can add additional slides for supplementary information. And below the saw, there's text boxes and file attachment capabilities as well. Um, once we have the context, we can get to designing compounds. So this we left mostly unchanged from Marvin Live. So we can enjoy real-time predictions, database lookups with explicit compounds or with small virtual libraries. And, and you can use uh, spreadsheet tools and card views to find the best ideas. Like in this example, we are looking at MPO score to mark one of the items as higher priority than the rest. And, and of course, this meant that we are introducing important metadata for each item in the system, like priority, uh, status, and assignment. So, Everything that we have done up until this point has been private, but at some point we need to share that so that we can start collaborating with our colleagues. So we're introducing a sharing or registration option as well, where during the process, we check each compound for quality rules and for duplicates uh, in the system or in the real registration system. Once shared, the compounds all get a unique virtual ID, and this can be a great way to facilitate discussion within the project teams. So this is what it looks like, what I've done so far. On the left, we have the hypothesis, our context, and on the right, we have one chemical series as a potential way to do what this proof question said. Um, now that I've shared that, others can browse this. Um, and I can switch my focus to other hypotheses or other projects. So we are also introducing project as an organizational tool into the system so that you can keep everything related to a target in one place and 
uh, you can switch to other ones depending on your daily focus. And it's quite easy to drill down into one of the hypotheses or design set to figure out what has happened. But of course, doing this is not always easy, so we have filtering options to help define the most important answers to our questions. Yet, drilling down into these all the time is not as convenient as it could be. So, we are also introducing a Kanban board, a simple grid where there is one column for each status along the process, and there is perhaps one row for each member of the project. And, and you can see in the ready for review column what is the agenda for the next team meeting. And in progress, you can see how uh, the different items are doing. And during the discussion, it's as easy as dragging a card to update the status across the system. We have Kanban boards for compounds as well, but here filtering is going to be more important because of the high number of compounds. But still, it is quite easy this way to find out what is it that I'm supposed to be working on. I can even reconfigure the Kanban board to put priority as one of the columns, and then it's very clear what is on my to-do list. We are exposing all of these capabilities in a universal search engine as well, where you can mix chemical, text, and metadata filtering um, terms as well in your query. For instance, if you want to find out who has been working on uh, anything that has uh, a scaffold like in the query, then you can easily get an answer, be that in the form of a hypothesis, a chemical series, or a specific compound. So, it's very easy to find these answers because you just need to click on the items and you can see the full listing. So, in a nutshell, we developed a lot of new systems to help um, capture hypotheses, in which contain all evidence supporting uh, scientific rationale. Um, we left our molecule design system mostly intact from modern life, but we are introducing new user experience for slow and batch calculations like docking and clustering. To have teams work together efficiently, we are introducing systems for teams, projects, virtual registration, status tracking and assignments. Um, for flexibility along network, we are introducing commenting or discussion capabilities, the ability to store file attachments and tags or labeling. Uh, to get as much value out of the content as possible, we are introducing a universal search engine as well with chemical and text searches. And on top of this all, we have role-based access control, which you might use to involve your CRO in the process on a compound level if they are in charge of synthesizing the compound. If you would like to learn more about any of these systems, please sign up for our workshop on Friday. It will be led by our application scientist team. Uh, the comments, uh, the link will be shared in the, in the chat window. So in the next couple of minutes, I'd like to talk to you about uh, the technology that we put into Design Hub. So on this oversimplified diagram, you can see the biggest moving pieces like our business logic server, uh, SQL database for persistence, uh, the identity provider which we use to log in people, and of course you have a CAM informatics backend with structure search and analysis capabilities. But the main point I want to highlight your attention to our plugins, which serve our connections to the computational chemistry infrastructure. So plugins offer great flexibility for Design Hub, and the solution that we can put together with plugins prove to be exceptionally satisfying uh, among the chemists. And, and we can use plugins in various workflows, such as describe these compounds or downstream this data, um, or export this data set in a convenient file format, or get the real ID of these compounds for duplicate checks. The technology behind the plugins um, supports either starting from Node.js or Java, and very recently we also added a Python helper library for machine learning projects. With more and more examples, um, we can run the entire plugin on serverless platforms, such as AWS Nando Fargate. Um, and all of the examples that we can have been published with source code 
on GitHub. Please check them out if you're interested. But, but here is uh, a montage of what we can do. Of course, you can do basics, like uh, calculate physical properties of a compound and show them in a nice spreadsheet or on a radar chart. For this, we are using well-known chemical predictors. We can, of course, do chemical database basics as well, like similarity and substructure search in purchasable compounds, like screen compounds and building blocks. For this, we are using um, well-known JCAM search engines like JCAM Postgres cartridge. But we can do machine learning as well. So in this example, we are connecting Design Hub to an MMP database trained on HERC data, the patch clamp assay in Campbell. With that, we have extracted about 200 high-frequency transformations, uh, and we can show you applicable transformations to a compound, statistically likely PIC50 shifts if you apply this transformation, and even an example of how the compound might look like after the transformation. These are all going to get uh, more interesting as we extend our capabilities with, for instance, the all-new Kemexon Herc predictor that we are going to talk about today. We can connect Design Hub to content systems as well, content databases like Compliance Checker, which contain shipping and storage legislations over 18 countries. And here we pull back legislation names and, and links and guidance text. We can do 3D visualization as well. Uh, there is even uh, a few versions. In one version, we are running a quick and dirty superimposition of your idea against a co-crystallized ligand. This takes a couple of seconds, um, but we can also use um, docking tools with pre-configured docking protocols and grids, um, and then you can dock your idea into uh, the binding site. This takes a couple of minutes, so it's a different user experience. At the, the far end of the technology extremes, we can do very interesting database searches as well, like on Anamine Real, which contains 1.2 billion potentially purchasable compounds. And this is useful for inspiration and suggesting quick alternatives um, in your project. And on top of this database, we can do sub-second similarity and substructure searches with JCAM microservices. Working on this even gave us the idea that we should put together an all public database search as a service. If you're interested in that, find me in the, the chat window, and then we can talk about that. Um, but there's a lot more that we can do with plugins. So, so we can connect to other potentially purchasable compound collections, like MQ's new Ultimate database. We can create scatter plots on interesting graphics, like the Sweet Spot. Uh, connect to other public databases, like Unicam. Run toxicology predictions. Run patent searches connect to Campbell for essay lookup, connect to PubCam, or look at exemplified structures pulled out from patents using Shure Campbell, create line charts, run substructure theaters, histograms, more 3D visualizations, more substructure features. The sky is the limit here. So in a nutshell, that's, that's Design Hub. Um, it helps you uh, and it connects uh, projects, virtual registration. Uh, it has graphical hypothesis capturing capabilities. You can look at virtual and real data with the system. And there are various ways of grouping compounds, including with productivity tools like Kanban boards. The system is available in a couple of different flavors. Um, one is a small company subscription plan, which runs on the AWS cloud for 10 uh, internal users, and you can choose any one of our 12, any one, any 12 from our uh, plugin catalog. And there are monthly and yearly subscription options, and, and we can extend this in various ways, of course. Um, there's a slightly larger subscription package as well for 30 internal users, and choose any 15 of our plugins from the catalog. And, and of course, we still have our enterprise licenses for on premise deployments. Uh, where you can bring your own infrastructure and enjoy the flexibility of annual and perpetual licensing options. Um, so I think that's it. Um, if you have any questions, um, please put them in the chat window. And with that, back to you, Yanchi.